These young tender hens are much easier to cut than a whole chicken. Then we're going to find the breastplate, which is basically the center, and we're going to cut it in half. Whoops, it slid out from under me. And now we have two halves here. I'm going to lay these on the paper towel so they can kind of get dry. I'm going to do the second one. I want to warn you guys, this is not a quick and easy dish right off the get-go. Um, it is a more complicated dish. I've never made it before. And one of the reasons I've never made it before is because I thought it was too complicated. Um, however, it's, I think it's all in my head. Now we're going to cut this one in half. we've got two pieces here. What I'm doing now is I'm going to dry them off with this paper towel. And I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper. That's it. There will be other seasonings going in the pot with them, but right now they just need salt and pepper. going to do this very generously. These little baby legs are so cute. Look at that. Can you see it? <laughs> and if y'all will notice, I've got a plastic sheet, cutting sheet over my uh, wood bamboo cutting board. And that's simply so that the meat doesn't touch the wood and contaminate it. I don't like cutting meat on wood. The reason I wanted to cook this today is because I'm trying it out for Christmas dinner. I'm tired of turkey. I don't even like turkey that much. I like the tenderloins. Um, and I like the thighs. And really, that's about the only part of the turkey I care for. All right some salt on this one. We're going to pepper them. We're going to leave them for a minute to sit. Now what we're going to do is fry up some bacon. What I've done is I've cut about a third of a pack of bacon, diced it up, and thrown it in this skillet. And right now it is on medium. What we're going to do is we're going to cook those 
form its shin halves in this bacon grease. And while this is cooking, let me tell you that this is not a super simple, quick and easy dish that Granny usually puts out. <laughs> um, it does take some time, and it is a little more involved than what I usually make. The reason that I wanted to make this dish is to kind of test my skills a little bit and see if I was really worth my salt in the kitchen. Um, but tonight we're going to eat this for dinner, and I'm testing it out for Christmas dinner in a few weeks, a couple weeks. Is it two weeks? It is two weeks. Holy Moses. So anyhow, um, what we want to do is get this bacon kind of crispy and render that fat down so we have something to cook the Cornish hens in. Now don't worry if your bacon sticks a little bit or if you've got brown bits in the bottom of your pan because we need those for this dish. We, we want it to get a little bit coated on the bottom because when we deglaze this pan, it's going to be amazing. It's going to make the best sauce you've ever had. I hope. <laughs> Y'all, we had a great time this weekend. My daughter marched in the Christmas parade, so we all went down to the parade and had a great time with some friends of ours from from school, actually, from Violet, uh, from the high school band. Because Violet plays the marimba, which is a huge instrument, huge. Um, when it comes to marching in parades, she doesn't get to play an instrument. So what they normally have her doing is holding the banner. So she's one of the first ones to march by. Um, and this year, they bought lights for the banner and lit it all up. And she had Christmas lights on her, her uh, uniform, her band uniform. Oh, crud. Speaking of band uniform, she forgot to take it back to school with her. Pits. All right, there's our bacon. Now, I'm just gonna turn it around, back it up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these halves of the Cornish hen, dip it in this flour, and dredge it so that it's coated. We're gonna shake off the excess. Now look, y'all, whenever I flour anything, the kitchen becomes an outright snowstorm. I'm not neat about it, neither do I care to be. Let's take that off. We're going to put that pot back on there. Y'all be sure that you get all the feathers off before you flour it. Some, sometimes they leave a bit of feather on there. All right, now I'm gonna stick it in there on medium. And I'm probably gonna have to do this in two batches. Definitely, because that pan's had all it can take. What we're doing is we're going to brown this on both sides. So we're going to leave it alone for a minute or three. Actually, it'll probably take about ten. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit because it's starting to smoke a little. All right, there's one heated up or browned. Throw another one in there. Ooh, I'll stick that one over there. And let me show y'all, I'm putting these in a... Uh, roasting pan, just for lack of a better place to put them for right now. 
Now I've got room to stick this other one in there. Now we've got all four pieces. Now we're going to throw in, I, I don't even know how many carrots that is, probably a cup. I just took some baby carrots and chopped them in half. These are frozen pearl onions, whole pearl onions, let me show you. You can get them in the frozen department. Um, I'm going to throw that in there. And now I'm going to put in a big hunk of garlic. I'm going to stir that around. two or three minutes until it's tender. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to stick these little Cornish hens back in here. Just like so. And we are going to flambe these Cornish hens. I've never done this before. I don't have the lid to this pan because my daughter broke it for me a few months ago. Had this pan for 20 years. And my 14 year old broke the, the lid. But anyhow, uh, I do have this pizza stone that fits over the top just in case I need it to smother out the fire. So what I've got here is a quarter of a cup of brandy. And I'm thinking I might need a little more. Right here I've got about a third of a cup of brandy. Now I'm going to light this match. There it goes. Look at that. Take it off of the stove burner. It's still flaming. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. And now it's burned out and we can put it back on the plate. Now the next thing I've got to do is transfer all of this you know what, I'm not going to do it. Now, next we're going to add two cups of wine. This is a yellowtail Shiraz, but any, any red wine will do. This is about three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. And I'm going to put a few sprigs of fresh thyme in here. We're going to put this lid on it and let it simmer. And I'm putting it on number two and a half. Three. I'm putting it on number three on my stove, which is Definitely medium low. Stick this on here. We're going to let it simmer for an hour and a half to two hours and barely let it cook. And it's just going to sop up all that wine and all that yumminess and hopefully be an excellent dish. <laughs> I will be back when it's finished and uh, we'll taste it together, all right? So I just took the lid off of this. And now what we're going to do is let this liquid reduce. 
Um, it's probably going to take about 20 minutes to let it reduce by about half. Um, I think that if I had to do this recipe over again, I would have used less wine. Um, just so there wasn't so much liquid in it. Um, but it, it's going to be alright. I'm just going to let it reduce until there's as much liquid as I want in it. What I decided to make with this dinner is some brown butter noodles. So I'm cooking my egg noodles in this pot as we speak. And they're almost finished. Now I've drained my noodles and I'm about to make the browned butter. Um, I need a little bit of sage. I'm going to use three tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm just going to use the same pot that I cooked the uh, noodles in. And since my butter is unsalted, I'm going to add just a little bit of salt to this, maybe call it a dash. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of sage to that pot. and start stirring it up. Now your butter will get melted and then it'll get kind of frothy and then it'll start to turn brown. And you have to watch it very closely because you don't want it to scorch or burn. I have my range set, this burner is set on medium right now. Once it gets all melted, I'll think about raising the temperature just a little bit. I'm using a black bottom pan, so it's gonna be hard to tell when it turns brown. So I got this spoon so that I can dip it out like this and see, but I want you to see how frothy it's getting. Let me show you this. See how it's got that foam on the top of it? That's the last stage before it starts to brown. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Now, I'm going to put just a little bit of garlic in there as we're close to the end. All right. Now we're going to throw our noodles back into this pot. We're going to turn the heat way down on low and just toss the noodles in the brown butter and garlic mixture. Oh, that looks good. Let me taste one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now I'm turning that off. Now we're going to plate it up. If you want to decorate it, you can put a little sprig of thyme on there. Look at that beautiful dish. I can't wait to taste it. Here we go. I'm going to taste a noodle first because I want the sauce. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's good. Wow. so tender, y'all. Mmm. Y'all have got to try this dish. 
it is really out of this world good. Um, again, if I would have known any better and not followed a random recipe, um, I would have used half of the wine that I used in this. I feel like I wasted a whole cup <laughs> because I've just let it cook down. But again, the longer you cook it or simmer it, the richer the flavor gets. And in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a pat of butter to this just to give it a little more richness. Just to see, I'm experimenting now. There's really not a lot of grease in this, which is good. Um, that sauce is rich and thick. I think I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of bacon over the top of this. No sense in letting those bacon bits go to waste, is it? Well, y'all, my dinner's finished. All I have to do now is wait for Poppy and Violet to get home. They'll be here at about 6 o'clock. So I'm going to keep this warm for them. I hope you guys try my recipe. It's not my recipe. I found it on the internet and then kind of finagled it the way I wanted it. But still, it was a fun dish to cook. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's not nearly as difficult as I was led to believe that it was. Um, some people use the oven. Some people use the stove top. Um, I don't know how Julia Child did it. I haven't read her recipe. But I think she'd probably be mortified that I did it on top of the stove <laughs> if she were alive today. If you enjoyed my, my dinner tonight, please subscribe to my channel and uh, Give me a like or leave a comment below and tell me what you think, okay? I'll see y'all again real soon, alright?